All right, we are back, ready to move on to our insane difficulty. Insane. Let's go ahead and start fresh. So, of course, we will up the slider velocity. 1.6 seems good. And then for the difficulties, we want the approach rate to probably be around 9 by the time you get to your insane difficulty. Maybe we'll go right in between and do 8.5. And, and then overall difficulty, we want to bump that up as well. Maybe we'll do seven and a half. Doesn't have to be too precise, just as long as you think it represents the map pretty well. So now we are on our top difficulty. So now we have a little bit more room to be creative. We have this rhythm at the beginning. Yeah. I think it might be fun to make this rhythm a little bit more active since we're in the insane difficulty now. We're still gonna use a little bit of distance snap, but really not near as much. We're gonna use convert slider to stream. Again, that's control shift F to make this stream here. Okay. Seems to be a good opener from the map. We can go ahead and roll with it. If you guys remember the theme of visual spacing, we're gonna kind of use the same thing. So just like we use this nook of this wave slider with uh, these two objects, we're gonna do the same thing with the next object as well. Here, we're gonna do a little bit of an overlap. I think it might fit the music. To make it a little bit friendlier for the player, what we're going to do is we're going to move the second circle just a little bit offset so that the player can see that that circle is there a little bit easier. Nothing too complex going on. So you can see that there's more jumps in the hard difficulty, more complex rhythm, but overall we're just building on the concepts that the hard difficulty had. This might be fun, is to repeat that shape there, like this, maybe? Maybe we can do that. So just like the music repeats, we'll repeat the map as well. And again, we're going to do the very same thing that we did last time, where we copy and paste this pattern, because it's the same in the music. But this time, it's a little bit different in the music. We'll use the same visual theme, but we will make the map just a little bit different. So previously, we'll see that we had this overlap. We're copy pasting something because it's the same rhythm in the music. This time, just like the music kind of fakes you out, it sounds like it's going to do the same thing as last time. We'll make it look like it's going to do the same thing in the map. So it's just the idea of keeping the map consistent with the music. You can see I am using distance snap for these quieter sections. So here we're at the next chorus. We're going to add some energy. So maybe we'll up the spacing a bit. And maybe like we did in the verse, we'll repeat this section. We're going to do something like this. And maybe we'll copy paste this whole thing and see what this feels like. So this is a cool way to repeat the map in the way that the music repeats. You don't always have to copy paste and you can definitely not. In this case, I'm choosing to because I feel like it fits and it won't get too repetitive. A lot of times you have to balance repetitiveness with the concepts that you're choosing. So here we're gonna do jumps again. The basics to making simple jump patterns is using geometry. So I'm gonna make a triangle here and then build a square out of that. And maybe I will make the square a little bit more complex by making it zigzag across it. This is the section where the drums get interesting. And since the music's getting interesting, the map will get interesting in the same ways with the rhythm. So you can see the jumps are bigger than the hard but we're still using a structure. The big thing is to make sure that you use a structure and keep all your objects related in the same ways that they're related in the music. Oh, and actually, you know what? We're at this section now, so we can bump up the slider velocity just a little bit, maybe just even like 1.25. So this will help give this section a little bit more oomph to it. So you can see how in the more difficult sections, the distance snap becomes a little bit less important because what's important is properly conveying the music in a more creative way. And if we were just distance snapping everything, we wouldn't really have the room to create these unique moments that match the unique moments in the song. So we may have our finished insane diff. We're going to give it a test. If you're watching this and just learning how to map, try to pay attention to how the different objects are related to each other. 
Notice how they have similar spacings between them and how they form different simple shapes to give the map a clean, unified appearance. The structure is simple and quite similar to the hard, but because the map is harder, we have more tools at our disposal, such as jumps or triples. The rhythm will come naturally from playing Osu and mapping and listening carefully to the song. Good luck out there!